To celebrate the Octagon's return to the land down under, we're bringing you an all-Australian episode of UFC Connected. Here's what's coming up. Jamie Malarkey details how a fateful encounter with Ross Pearson led to a fruitful partnership. I think myself in the UFC, that's his legacy sort of carrying on. Jack Jenkins shares his journey through the Aussie MMA scene to the bright lights of the Octagon. He sacrificed a lot to get that call up and you know every sacrifice I ever made became instantly worth it when I walked out at UFC Perth. Jack Jenkins is one to watch. We delve into the decorated history of Australians in the UFC. With the growth of UFC and mixed martial arts, it was only natural for Australia to follow and to start producing some of the highest caliber of athletes the world has ever seen. And welterweight Jack Della Maddalena takes us through his sensational UFC debut. Pretty simple formula was go out there and perform and win and the contract would be mine. A world away from his home in the north of England, former tough winner Ross Pearson now calls Australia home. After settling on the New South Wales Central Coast, Pearson linked up with local lightweight standout Jamie Malarkey, and he began coaching the young Aussie. Together, the unlikely couple formed an inseparable bond, and under Ross's guidance, Jamie made it all the way to the UFC, where he is now a mainstay in the lightweight division. We hear more about their journey as we head down under for Unbreakable. Jamie Malarkey has become a staple among the most exciting lightweights in the game. And of course, Malarkey coached by Ross Pearson, the winner of season nine of The Ultimate Fighter. A great man for Jamie Malarkey to have in the corner and guide him through this career. Oh, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without meeting Ross. Yeah, beautiful. I think myself in the UFC, that's his legacy sort of carrying on. We're still working, we're still climbing that ladder and can't wait to see where we go. I'm the first fighter to make it to the UFC from the Central Coast, so it's, it's pretty cool. I got into fighting when I was 14 years old. I was always into sports. I was playing footy and I wanted to keep fit in the off season. I never really was like a standout in sports. But when I found mixed martial arts, I was just pretty good at it. One day, I was watching The Ultimate Fighter. I was a big fan of Ross Pearson. I always liked his style, even his attitude that you could see, those small parts of his personality in the show. I want to hurt him. I want to hit him with everything I've got. When I was on The Ultimate Fighter, I just felt like I was the number one guy. Ross Pearson! I would fight anyone. I just knew I was going to win. That was it. Ross, the real deal. Pearson has been in the UFC for quite a long time now and has fought some excellent fighters inside the octagon. I looked at Ross and I was like, man, I, I can do this. This is something that I really think I'm going to pursue. When I first turned pro, I was 19. I was just a young, hungry kid, man. Like, just wanted to get in there and fight anyone and everyone. It went really well for me for the most part of my pro career in the Australian scene. Jamie Malaki! After Old My Fighter, I met my wife in Sydney. I did my camp in Alliance in San Diego and she came out with us. And it wasn't until we had kids that we decided to move to Australia. I decided to open a gym here on the coast to keep me involved after my career in the sport. I wanted to be involved in the fighting. I'm not a gym owner for like CrossFit guys and keep fit guys. <laughs> I, I want the meanest, toughest guys we can find. At the time, I fought under Magnus Martial Arts for a bit over 10 years. Noah Magnus was my main coach. We fought in tournaments around the world, traveled overseas together, and then he moved up north a couple of hours away. So now I didn't have a coach. I walked into the gym and just saw Ross Pearson. And I was like, what, what the f That's Ross Pearson. I was just so keen to train with him. 
When I first met Jamie, Jamie was in like a pivotal point in his young career. I could give him the things that he didn't have. I could take him to the next level. That was the biggest thing his old coach couldn't do to what I could. I went 9-0. I thought I was invincible. I was just young and just couldn't be stopped in my head, you know? The first losses I had in my career were the hardest, especially going on a pretty hot streak. Ali Tolkanovsky in the green trunks taking on Jamie Malachy. Does. Oh! Over! Over! Having to deal with those emotions, the self-doubt that crept in that I never had before. He lost to top-level guys. I think it, like, frustrated him. He doubted himself and questioned himself. He was just going to pack it in. And I told him right out, I was like, you're fighting in the wrong weight group. He was fighting at 145. He was cutting too much weight. Fighting at 50% against these good guys, you're beating yourself before you even get in. I'm not saying, like, I saved his career or anything like that, but, like, him hearing that from me kind of, like, lit the spark under his ass again. I still wanted to do featherweight. I was like, oh, you know, I don't know if I should fight lightweight, the bigger, the this, the that, and he went, nah, your featherweight days are done. Ross pushed me on. And it took a little bit of time before jumping back in. My first fight back was about after a year layoff. I felt great. Healthier, bigger, stronger fighter. It was just lightweight from here on in. Once you get back in that wing column, it's just a massive relief, you know, and it sort of proves that it really does make you stronger and you learn more from your losses than any of your wins. It makes you a better fighter, better man, better everything. We never even had the conversation about, do you even want to fight in the UFC? I kind of like just knew. Why else would he be here? Why else would he be training the way he is? I got a call from Ross. He basically just said, I'm going to step up into the big leagues, and I was just, like, in shock. I'm getting tingles talking about it now. Looking in on it, I was scared. I've only been coaching three years. I don't feel like I'm a good coach yet. Is this kid really ready for what it takes? How he was going to perform under the lights and cameras? UFC debut was in Melbourne. Central Coast MMA is on the UFC map, courtesy of one Jamie Malarkey. Walking out there was like electric, man. The size of the arena. There was, I think, 58,000 in the attendance. It was a crazy back and forth war. Sure, these boys are I'm swinging. telling you, man. Next level toughness from Malarkey. This was a fight everybody was talking about here all week. And man, did it deliver. The winner by unanimous decision, Brad Riddell! Losing my debut sucked. It was never how I imagined it. But last that he's had in the UFC, he's bounced straight back. And he's mature enough now to not let the losses get so big that it blows you out and you don't want to do it again. He corrected a lot of things. His focus, his determination. He like really honed in on that. He become a better athlete. Ross definitely improved my confidence as a fighter. Having that confidence helped me a lot. Going into fight, your mindset is so important. Malarkey will try to produce on a big stage tonight. He's banging hard, he's punching hard now. He's kicking hard, he's stronger. Oh! oh Marley Lambert oh, Malarkey! That's it, that's Jamie Malarkey! Wow. Live and in color! Jamie, he's got that will, grit, determination. He can do anything he wants. Yes! If he wants to really hurt you. Oh my goodness! He'll do good. We're talking about Malarkey being the future coming into the sport who's faced the best of the best. He's training with Ross Pearson, he's leveled up in each one of these fights. It's like when you get put in the ocean, you're gonna sink or swim. You just swim. Beautiful takedown, good timing. And this is what Ross Pearson was talking about, levels to this game. Nice left hook and a smile from Jamie. 
And all indications are that Malarkey is going to prevail. We're just aiming to climb to the top of the ladder. Where Jamie is right now, he's coming into his prime. He stayed in. He took his ass kickings. He took his beatings. I see the hooligan that I was in him. Maybe I am a good coach. I think that he's going to have a good coaching career. Hopefully he inspires and brings through another whole crop of young guys to take on this journey. The future holds some exciting things, man. I see myself really taking it as far as I can. And... He's the nicest kid in the world. I want to see him live his career. I want to see him become a world champion. Lightweight's got another player from Australia. Jack Jenkins is the latest in a growing crop of Australian prospects in the UFC. The Victorian featherweight ripped through the Aussie national regional scene before getting his shot on Dana White's contender series. Despite earning a contract, Dana was critical of his performance, but after multiple impressive performances in the UFC octagon, Jack has confirmed he is one to watch with a very bright future. We found out more about the man they call Far Jack in this edition of Fighter Focus. Bar Jack Jenkins. A lot of the MMA masses are excited to see this man compete. My fighting style would be high pace. His calling card is absolutely his captain. And there's that punishing leg kick. High IQ. This kid can get it done absolutely anywhere. And high violence. Ooh. From the first moment that I decided that I was going to fight, I wanted to be the champion in the UFC. Trust me when I say Jack Jenkins is one to watch. For Jack Jenkins! I grew up in a little town called Bacchus Marsh. It's the first country town outside of metropolitan Melbourne. I grew up as the youngest of three brothers, so uh, we spent most evenings either wrestling or fighting in some capacity. My older brother, Ben, was a kickboxer. When I was about 13, he had enough of me mouthing off about wanting to come up to the gym, and he eventually took me up there, and I fell in love with it from the first time I walked in the door. I grew up traditional Muay Thai kickboxing. With any sport, some people just have natural gifts and natural abilities, and one of my natural abilities was from the first moment I got shown how to throw a leg kick, something just clicked and I just knew how to do it. I've worked on the timing and stuff to build it into the weapon it is now, but I've always had a bit of natural ability and could generate a lot of power there. I'd been kickboxing since I was 13, but I always wanted to train MMA and I always wanted to get to the UFC. When I was 15 and 16, I started training with guys like Jake Matthews and Jimmy Crute and Bulk. I turned pro straight away. I never had an amateur career. When I first started, I sort of burst onto the scene and I had three fights for three finishes. People started to take notice after those first three fights. Jack landing big shots of his own. Diego backs up. Diego tapped and Jack Jenkins. Our new eternal featherweight champion. Featherweight bird on the line. It's Jenkins, who has UFC ambitions, up right. against Jesse Medina. See how Jesse's checking those legs instead of turning his foot out. He's in big trouble here, Medina, no. with that leg. No, and Jenkins it. knows it. This is it. He's going for the kill here. This fight's over. No, that's it. It's and all over. People keep giving me the leg, and if you keep giving it to me, I'm going to keep breaking it. Oh, that calf kick. That calf kick, he's done. Oh, oh he gets it. it. Look, I'm three fights for three broken legs. I hit you with that kick, you're going down, it's just how it is. It's my time. You know, I want that UFC shot. I got my call to go on Dana White's Contender Series. Jack Jenkins trying to join the exclusive group that has earned their way to the UFC off of Dana White's Contender Series. When it finally came, it was that much more worth it because I'd had to do the work on the local scene to get there. Here we go. We knew he was a brawler and he dragged people into brawls, so 
our game plan was just to stick away from the brawl. Oh, Linares charging forward, walks right into a takedown. I hit the same trip over and over. Big shots, perhaps just a few more for Jenkins, and he gets a TKO. That's going to do it. I got the finish in the third round, and I know it was late, but I thought I'd done enough to get the call. Jenkins! My thing with Jack Jenkins tonight is he looked like a one-trick pony. It's the last show of the year. On a night that I might not have taken him, I'm definitely taking him tonight. So congrats, Jack. Show me some more kickboxing. Jack Jenkins, welcome to the UFC. Ended up being branded by Dana, the one-trick pony, and I've run with it since then. Now I was going to be in the big leagues with, with all the big boys. Dateline Perth, Western Australia. It has been a long four years, but at long last, the Octagon has returned to the land down under, and man, have we brought the goods. You sacrifice a lot to get yourself in the position where you put yourself in front of the UFC eyes and get that call up. And you know, every sacrifice I ever made became instantly worth it when I walked out at UFC Perth. What a response as Melbourne's Jack Jenkins gets set to make his UFC debut. Safe to say that fan response suggests that a lot of the MMA masses are excited to see this man compete. I love fighting in front of the Australian fans. It's the best feeling in the world. I was just grateful that I got to make my debut in my own country. Dana White called him playfully a one-trick pony, but what he didn't know was that Jack Jenkins has actually broken the legs of three of his last five opponents. This kid can get it done absolutely anywhere. I have a very unique ability to switch on quickly as soon as the cage door shuts and it's victory by any means necessary. And we are in action straight away. Massive knees from Jenkins. And now Jenkins going to work. Beautiful combination. Oh! One kick and you can see the damage. I've been kicked pretty hard myself. Once you feel how hard a good leg kick is, it, it makes you understand the value of being on the other end of it. We know about this calf kick trend. It just sounds different from Jenkins. Oh! Oh, Jack! Jack! Yeah. Hey, not bad for a one-trick pony! Let's go! Once my coach had taken me down to rounds at a different gym and it was all fully grown men and we did round after round after round and by the end of the session I got up and said, anyone want to do more? And my coach looked at me and said, you're like far lap mate, you just keep going. And I looked back at him and said, nah, I'm far jack and then it kind of stuck from there and I've kind of rolled with it. Far lap's probably our equivalent to a secretariat or a sea biscuit one of these big horses probably signifies for a lot of people here hope during bad times and he's one of our greatest athletes. Ninety-nine percent of my available brain power goes to fighting so with that other one percent you look for any outlet you can get and for me I love horse racing. My family have a bit of an affinity with the sport and uh, yeah I've kind of taken that to the next level. Farlat was known mostly for his will to win and his ability to do it against the odds. You know, when they put a lot of weight on his back, he still managed to do it. He went over to the Agua Caliente in Mexico and he did it against all the American horses. And, you know, people told me I'd never beat the Americans and I'd never beat the Brazilians, and, and here I am. A lot of people don't understand the competitive edge that those jockeys are trying to get on each other. Everyone's looking for a way to be 1% better than the people they're competing against and uh, that's something that translates between fighting and horse racing. Another similarity is horse racing is as dangerous as it gets. If you do have a fall, the chances that it's going to be life-threatening or potentially life-ending is huge, so horse racing is more dangerous than fighting in many ways. When people think about Far Jack Jenkins, I want people to think about a kid from Bacchus Marsh who just never gave up. Not a one-trick pony, this man's a striker. He's a deadly assassin in every area of mixed martial arts. I've always had a chip on my shoulder and I want to prove people wrong. I want to prove to people that not only I belong here, but I belong at the very pinnacle of this division. I'm not just a one-trick pony. Yeah.
In 2001, Elvis Sinosik made history as the first Australian to compete in the UFC, giving rise to generations of aspiring Aussie fighters. Since that time, athletes from the land down under have risen to the very top of the organization, with waves of young contenders, record-breaking events, and revered champions in Robert Whitaker and pound-for-pound -pound king Alexander Volkanovsky. We caught up with some of these Aussie warriors to discuss the immense impact of Australians competing in the UFC. This is On Point. Ah, oh, well, a good day to you from Australia. The UFC returning to the land down under. The impact Australian fighters have had on the UFC is pretty significant. They say it's the fastest growing sport in Australia. You definitely see that 10 years ago to now. It just evolved so much, it's getting huge. With the growth of UFC and mixed martial arts, it was only natural for Australia to follow and to start producing some of the highest calibre of athletes the world has ever seen. We've always had really exciting fighters and fighters that just go to war. Whoa! Oh, he rocked him. I don't know what it is, but we just love a good scrap. Absolute warrior. The Aussies love this type of stuff, right? They love the combat sports. They love contact. Fighting is in our nature, it's something that runs deep in our blood and I think that's why we're so drawn to it. The Australian MMA scene has just been skyrocketing and we all get along. We're all on the same team and we all back each other. When one of us wins, we all win. The crowd on their feet. I've been watching for a long time, so I remember Elvis Sinisic. The king of rock and rumble, Elvis Sinisic. Oh, oh, trouble here. There's the tap. There's the tap. Anthony Perosh. Anthony Perosh is a real pioneer of martial arts in Australia. That's under the chin. Oh, there There's the is. tapping hand. He puts it to work. All those guys. Kyle Noak. Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy. Kyle Noak. He got him. The first Australian MMA fighter in the UFC that I remember was George Shotoropoulos. George was so important because he was the first guy in those lighter weight divisions that showed us kids who were here training at the time that we could get to the top of the division. He's going for an arm. Make there sure it the is. Dent doesn't it turn. is nice. all over. Beautiful. Beautiful. George Shotoropoulos. These pioneers, they paved the way for my generation and even the generation up from me. They opened the doors and let through the flood. We'll see you next in UFC Australia, maybe, huh? Thank you. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie! The first event in Australia was UFC 110. From beautiful Australia, the MMA leader has touched down in this great nation. The UFC coming and showing that they could run such a professional show in Sydney opened the public's eye to the fact that this is a sport, not some backyard thing. And that's why we kept getting good events. We're in Melbourne, Australia. We welcome you to Adelaide, live inside the RAC Arena here in Perth, Western Australia. It showed the love and passion for it, that us as a nation could fill out a whole stadium. UFC 193, that made waves in the sport. Record-setting attendance inside the Etihad Stadium. It was a huge moment for all of us. He's hurt. Rich Walsh, dominant. What a finish for Daniel Kelly. Kyle, nope. He defeats Peter Sabata. Completely dominant for Matthews. Mark Hunt and Bigfoot. That fight was unreal. Oh, he tagged him. Trying to finish it. Hit us all over. Mark Hunt, five, knockout. And then there was Holly Holm versus Ronda Rousey. Here we I remember watching Holly land that head kick. Holly looking to finish! Out. The whole stadium erupted. Holly Holm shocks the world in front of a record-setting crowd. Australian events are different because of the crowd, the atmosphere. We've got a different kind of culture over here. It's always fun, put it that way. The Australian fans are lunatics. You go to other cities and they're not there till like the main cards. Australians are there from the very first fight. When it is an Australian event, they get behind their own like no other. You can hear the crowd during the fights, they're just electric. There is an energy that they put out that you cannot describe. 
It's an honour to fight in front of Aussie fans as an Australian. Sydney West, stand the f up, bro. Come on. In 2012, the tough smashes come out. What it done for Australia MMA was like, it definitely put it on a rapid incline then. I just remember seeing Whitaker as a young guy coming through and he obviously did so well in that. He just went out there and just smashed everybody. The impact of that show was huge because once I got into the UFC, I'd like to think that I had a bit of a hand in promoting the sport quite thoroughly in Australia. A lot of promise for this kid. We may have a contender here at Robert Whitaker. When he started beating those top 10 guys, yeah, it was pretty obvious that he was going to be champion. Oh, Whitaker in the head kick! Whitaker has knocked out Derek Brunson in the first round! Rob's fights against Yol, obviously, crazy. A closely contested championship fight. Oh, oh big elbows! Australia has a UFC champion. His name is Robert Whitaker. To have an Australian fighter get the world title, it's so big. For me, it definitely gave me um, even more hope than I already had. It wasn't too long after that before I was able to do it. Alexander Volkanovsky trying to win a UFC title tonight. No! Now we have Volk, the current champion of the West featherweight division. The way Volk represents Australian MMA is just incredible. And he goes out there and performs. Oh my goodness! Oh! Every time he fights, yeah, I turn into a fan. You pave the way, not only can you become a champion, but you can become the very best in the sport and dominate. And still! It's crazy to think that we have the number one pound for pound fighter in the world in Australia. Surely this is the golden era of Aussie MMA. I think it's only going to get better. And I feel like this is the wave that takes over the whole sport. The guys like me and Jimmy and all that that are coming through, we're standing on the shoulders of giants, of people who have come before us and kind of laid the path. Now we can really try and emulate that example that they've set. It's an honour and it's a responsibility to represent Australia. It's such a great country with great people and to wear that flag is a pretty special feeling. We've shown you we've got champions, we've got contenders and it's just going to keep going. Great to be down under. Love this country. Following a stellar performance on Dana White's Contender Series, Australian welterweight Jack Della Maddalena made his highly anticipated Octagon debut at UFC 270. Since that statement-making win, the Aussie knockout artist has provided fight fans with highlight after highlight on his undefeated run, really solidifying his status as a future contender. The fighting pride of Perth revisits the night where it all started. Jack Della Maddalena packed on the frequent flyer miles to chase this UFC dream from down under to Vegas and now Anaheim. I asked him, when did you start taking this thing seriously? He goes, in this contender series fight. When I started the sport, I definitely thought the cool way to get signed is basically you got onto Dana White contender series. Jack Della Maddalena on a nine fight win streak. Could you imagine if that 10th win came in the contender? Pretty simple formula was go out there and perform and win and the contract would be mine. Put me in a fight with anyone, I'm gonna turn into a fight and give him my old. He's not afraid to take a punch. He's not afraid to deliver a punch. He's right at home in this UFC octagon. It is important to go out there and set your place, let everyone know what's up, and I was gonna go out there and take someone out. Very tight, accurate combinations from Della Maddalena. Here we go. Oh my goodness. Now he's landing some Whoa. big shots. Nice, fight needs to finish. When Dane is on his feet, good things are coming. Your winner by unanimous decision, Jack Della Maddalena. Jack didn't just show us a little bit of everything, he showed us a lot of everything. I expect big things from this kid. He wasn't wrong. Get over here, Jack. Jack Della Maddalena, get over here. When he read my name out, it was surreal and it was uh, it just felt like it was some accomplishment. Jack Della Maddalena, congratulations. That was absolutely sensational. My UFC debut was UFC 270 in Anaheim. UFC 270 from the great state of California. To be on such a big card in a cool place like Anaheim is really nice.
Honestly, when we got to the event, it just felt like a normal show. I felt at home, you know, I felt like I belonged in there. Obviously, yeah, nerves are gone, but I just tried to control those. So here's the highly touted 25-year-old out of Perth in Western Australia. A lot of people think this might be the guy to take the torch and be the next big star in Australia. There was a lot of people. It was incredible just going out there, seeing everything that I usually would watch on TV. Being there in person was insane. So I fought Pete Rodriguez. Pete dead game Rodriguez. 4-0, longest pro fight, 2 minutes and 21 seconds. Just looking at his style, I knew I was going to beat him. I thought I was better than him pretty much everywhere. It's just a matter of going out there and doing it when the pressure is on. The nerves had left, and I just looked at him and thought, yeah, this is a bad day to be Pete Rodriguez. We're not there to be friends or touch gloves, so I just told him I'm not touching gloves, so don't come at me. It looked like Della Maddalena was saying, no, we're not no. going to touch gloves. You don't need that. I'll shake your hand after. He threw some heavy stuff that sort of glanced off my head. Counter from Rodriguez. But nothing too clean. He was just throwing big, heavy right hands. He wasn't really mixing it up. And I think I established the jab early, and I busted his nose up. Stung him a little bit with that jab. The right jab. He was just waiting for the big right hand to come. It was just a matter of time for it to overcommit to a shot. And as soon as he committed, I thought, yeah, that's it. Just slid out of the way and just landed to the left, and he stumbled back. Oh! Oh, my goodness. He went down. I ran over, and I could tell that he didn't want any more part of it. So I just popped him a few more times. That'll do it. 11 in a row for Jack Della Maddalena. It was pretty surreal, you know. I was just on a high at that point. I was just happy to get the win and happy to put on a nice, clean performance. Jack Della Maddalena! And left it all on the line and had a good scrap. It was just nice to get that debut out of the way. It was incredible. Della Maddalena is something special. This kid has a huge future ahead of him. Well, that's all for this episode, but we will see you next time right here on UFC Connected. Thanks for watching.